So I've been asked to go over the quiz that I gave today in a little bit more detail. And uh, again, this quiz is important, not so much that you're able to work these answers, because I, I gave you atomic masses and other things that were very simple to make the math very simple. But it's important to understand the process. This whole module on stoichiometry, the relating of moles to moles in proportions based on their balanced reaction equation is the core of what chemistry is. And um, in this module, we've learned how to go from moles to moles from any one um, element or molecule in the reaction to another element or molecule in the reaction. And so we're at the place now where we're dealing with both mole-to-mole um, -mole relationships, and now we've extended that to include mass-to-mass -mass relationships. But remember, in stoichiometry, you can't go directly from mass to mass. We're not looking at the coefficients as a ratio of masses to masses. We have to go from mass, convert to moles, relate moles to moles, and then translate back from moles to mass. And so the problem that's written here on the board that was on the quiz today is really just to test your ability to use those concepts. Now, I have been teaching a graphical way of walking the path from known to unknown or given to unknown. And I just encourage you to follow this process. Also understand that the book lays it out using conversion factors. And the conversion factors that are in the book are exactly the same conversion factors that this graphical method um, helps you realize. And so we're going to go ahead and just answer this question, answer the both questions that are on the quiz from today. But the key thing is to remember the process, because the process will be exactly the same no matter what type of problem, excuse me, no, no matter what the numbers are the process is going to be exactly the same. So the first question asks, if 80 grams, now I've already written down the balanced reaction equation. And so by process, or by the method that I use, it says if 80 grams of AB2, so what I do is I've got the balanced reaction equation, and I write directly underneath the molecule in question, I'm writing the given. The given for the quiz was 80 grams. If 80 grams of AB2 reacts with excess C. Now I'm using imaginary elements A, B, and C. That's not carbon. It's element A, element B, and element C. So it re reacts with excess C. Now my process is to look at those molecules which are in excess and mark them with a plus sign and then I circle it. So as not to be confused with the plus sign in the reaction equation. This just lets me know that I have plenty of element C to react with whatever AB2 I have. And so AB2, by virtue of the fact that it's not in excess, it is the limiting reactant. And it's always significant to look at the limiting reactant because the limiting reactant is that reactant which is going to control the reaction engine. As soon as that element or molecule runs out, then the reaction engine stops. And so you can only use up as much of the other reactants and produce as much of the product as the limiting reactant will allow you to use up or produce. So if 80 grams of AB2 reacts with excess C, then how many grams of each product are formed? So again, on my mass line, the area directly underneath the equation, I'm going to write how many grams. How many grams? So how many grams of each one of these two products is produced when 80 grams of molecule AB2 reacts with excess C? Well, remember in stoichiometry, again, we're relating moles to moles. And so the graphical method that I use, we're going to be relating the, the horizontal line is going to go from underneath the stoichiometric coefficient of the two molecules in question. In this case, the molecules in question are AB2. I'm going to draw a vertical line where the stoichiometric coefficient is. In this case, it's an implied one. Remember, ones are never written. It's an implied one, because if it weren't at least one, that molecule wouldn't be present. A vertical line, let's say that we're going to solve for how many grams of molecule BC are produced. I'm going to draw a vertical line down like this, and connect it to. Now stoichiometry is how we move left and right on this diagram 
And we have another process involving the molar masses by which we move up and down. Let's just start us off right. Let's go ahead and put the stoichiometric relationship between AB2 and BC. Looking at the stoichiometric coefficients, there's a 1 and a 2. So the relationship is 1 to 2 based upon the stoichiometric coefficients of the two molecules, in this case, that are in question. We know that stoichiometry only involves moles, so I can write over here at this corner would be the amount of moles of AB2, and over here would be the moles of BC. And in relationship, I know that for every one mole of AB2, I can produce two moles of BC. But I don't know how many moles of AB2 I have. I know how many grams of AB2 that I have. And so the key of moving vertically, or excuse me, horizontally, correction again, the key of moving vertically up and down on this diagram is based on the molar mass. You see, we're actually just going to flow this diagram all the way around. We're given a mass, and we need to flow the diagram over to the unknown mass. From the given to the known. So in this case, as we're coming vertically down, on this side, going vertically up, and obviously you're moving left to right. As I said, the key moving vertically is the molar mass, and it's specifically the molar mass of the molecule in question. So we're going to need to know the molar mass of the molecule AB2 and the molecule BC. Now, I gave you these um, masses over here. I said that molecule A is 10 AMU, B is 15 AMU, and C is 20 AMU. Just nice round mass, so you didn't need to use a calculator. And to go from 80 grams, how many moles of AB2? Well, all we do is add up one, the mass of 1A and the mass of 2Bs. And we see that the molar mass of AB2 is 40 AMUs per molecule, but that is also 40 grams per mole. So it's 40 grams per mole. We have, we have 80 grams of it, and there are 40 grams per mole. And as we move vertically down on this diagram, the operation is division. So 80 grams at 40 grams per mole works out to be 2 moles. 80 divided by 40 is 2. So 80 grams could be written as 2 moles. Now that we have it in moles, we can actually use stoichiometry to figure out how many moles of BC that will be produced whenever 2 moles of AB2 reacts. The relationship here, the coefficient is going to be, as we move across from, in this case, from left to right, the technique is the first number that you strike gets driven into the denominator of the fraction. So in this case, they hit the, they hit the number 1 first, and it drives it down, which means that the multiplier becomes 2 over 1. And more specifically, for every 2 moles, 2 moles of BC relates to 1 mole of AB2. And the result of the math, moles AB2 cancels moles AB2, and I have four moles of BC. So now I can say that for every 80 grams of AB2 that reacts according to this reaction equation, I can produce four moles of BC. But the question didn't ask me for moles of BC, it asked me for grams of BC. So again, I need to move from the moles to the mass line, and the key there is, again, the molar mass. The molar mass of BC is 1B and 1C for a total of 35 grams per mole. 35 AMU per molecule, or 35 gram per mole. So at 35 grams per mole. And the operation, since I'm moving vertically upward is multiplication. 
I'm going to multiply my four moles of BC at 35 grams per mole. When I multiply those, I have 140 grams of BC. So 80 grams of AB2 reacts with excess C to produce 140 grams of BC. Again, stoichiometry, you cannot go directly from mass to mass. Stoichiometry only allows you to go from moles to moles. So we do it indirectly by going from mass to moles, moles to moles, and then moles to mass using the molar masses. So that technique is the same technique whether you're looking at real elements and you're looking at masses that are times 10 to the negative 35 grams or masses that are times 10 to the second grams. Process is exactly the same. Just put in the correct numbers, follow the flow, and you'll get the right answer. Now the second half, we've answered for how many, how many grams of BC, but we have to also answer for how many moles of A. We can use the same process and go from AB all the way over to A. And you're going to note in terms of moles, it's a one-to-one -one relationship in moles. AB2 relates to A one-to-one. -one. So knowing that we have two moles of AB2, we also then know that we're going to produce two moles of A. And a mole of A is 10 AMU per molecule, or 10 grams per mole. So at two moles times 10 grams per mole, we have 20 grams of A. Another way we could do that is given what we've currently worked out here, we have part of the answer already. We just need to move from this node here over to grams of A. Well, the relationship here is 2 to 1. 2 to 1. And we're moving from 4 moles over to an unknown number of moles. 4, as we, as we move from left to right, we hit the 2. That drives it into the denominator. That makes our multiplier, our conversion factor, 1 half, which is actually 1 mole of A per 2 moles of BC for a total of 2 moles. Now again, that makes sense because it's a one-to-one -one here, so it's one-to-one, -one, two to two. The process from moles to grams, the molar mass of A is 10, 10 grams per mole, and so we produce 20 grams of element A. Now we can say that when 80 grams of AB2 reacts in excess C, it will produce 140 grams of BC and 20 grams of A. Not because we related mass to mass directly, but because we converted from mass to moles, then we related moles to moles directly, and then we converted back into mass. Okay. Now the second half of the problem says if two liters of AB2 reacts with excess C, how many liters of each product are formed? Hopefully recognize that this is an application of Gila lussac the, the law for gases. And remember that Gila lussac can only be used for gases. Those reactants and those products which are gases. We can only make statements about the volume and relate them using the stoichiometric coefficients when we're talking about the gases. We can't say anything about non-gases using Gila lussac And so, Let's see, we've got two liters of AB2. Let me just go ahead and tell you that when we talk about this in terms of liters and we're using Gila sock, since we can relate them directly, you can kind of think of this as going on the moles line. Now later on, we're going to do some things with, with gases and we're going to relate moles to moles using volumes and densities, or and concentrations actually. So this will kind of be changed when we get to that stage where we're going to have a volume times a concentration produces moles, and we'll, we'll get to that. But for right now, we're relating volumes to volumes directly using Gila Sock, and so we can kind of think of it as being on this mole line. We can relate them directly, so we put them down here. 
So if two liters of AB2, two liters, reacts with excess C, then how many liters of both of these can be produced? So we're just going to kind of run that along and look at them and say, well, we have a gas, and the gas reacts with a solid to produce a gas and a liquid. So the catch here is I can't make a statement about the volume of A. A, a is not a gas, it's a liquid. So I can't even answer for the second product here. But I can't answer for the first product because it's a gas. And so looking at this, I've got two liters, and I need to go over to BC. Two liters of AB2, and how does that relate to the volume? Again, according to the same stoichiometric coefficients, this conversion factor. The multiple going across, again, is 2. So it's times 2. And 2 liters times 2 is 4 liters. So I can say that if 2 liters of AB2 reacts with excess C, it will produce 4 liters. If 1 produces 2, then 2 produces 4. And the volumes are directly related. So 2 liters of AB2 produces 4 liters of BC.